What if there was a way for your thoughts, your words, to be sent into the future and to be understood and appreciated by someone anywhere on the planet? Would that not make us, in a way, immortal and give us the power to communicate across time and space? When we were inquisitive children curled up under the blankets, flashlight in hand, reading our favourite story, were we not actually inviting the author of that story into our innermost space to share their thoughts, their stories with us in their words? I'm Bella St. John. Join us as we venture together to explore the history of those words in a novel idea. My dear friend, Miss Jean Walters, it is so good to have you with me on this author journey. And I've been looking, for, I, I look forward to all of my interviews, but I've been looking forward to this one because we've known each other for so long now. We've worked together, but this is the first time we've seen each other and had a chat and face to face. Yes. yes. And I have to say, you look so much younger than I had imagined because when I was looking at some of the things you've done, I thought, oh my gosh, she's probably a lot older than I, you know. Like I was thinking you were like maybe 60 or something, 50, 60, but you look like you're in your 20s. <laughs> well, thank you, but you're correct on your age bracket. Okay, well, you know, I mean, you're, you're, you're so young and vibrant. That's all I want to oh, say. Thank you. <laughs> you, you, you can come, you can be my guest anytime. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I got the key, right? <laughs> you, you definitely do, definitely do. And I didn't even pay her. Oops, I didn't even pay her to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. So now let's have a look at your uh, author journey. Okay, now you've sure. written you've written a bunch of books that we'll yeah. get onto in a second. But let's go back to the very beginning. You were born and raised and still live in mm -hmm. beautiful St. Louis, uh, Missouri. Yeah. And you know what? When people say St. Louis, we know immediately they're not from here. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, so you're St. Louis. Yes, yeah, that's right. We're at St. Louis. <laughs> but okay. It, but yes, I have. And it's a very stable, solid community. And a lot of people come here to raise their families here because it's just, uh, you know, it's got a lot of Torian energy to it. And it's, so it's very stable and um, it's just a good, solid place to live. I have traveled all over the world, so I really have such a fascinating, uh, you know, just curiosity about everything. So, so um, but this has been a great base for me, for sure. And how has that base influenced your writing? Um, Did you, were you writing as a youngster? You know, I, I don't think I was writing so much as a youngster, but I was always a tremendous reader. And I read everything that I, my dad and I used to go to the library together every week. And uh, I read every autobiography and biography in the library in my age bracket, because I wanted to understand people, I wanted to understand how they figured out what they were going to do, and how they figured out what their talents were. It just seemed like such a fascinating concept to, you know, to know early in life that you could be a writer or that you could be an inventor or you could be a politician or, you know, a judge or, you know, that's awesome. <laughs> just awesome. Mm -hmm. So I've always been fascinated by those kinds of stories and I still read them. I still read biographies, you know, yeah. to this day. Yeah. yeah. How did they do I it? Like what got him there? Yeah. Exactly. My my switch off uh, after a day of doing whatever is to go onto YouTube or onto Amazon or whatever and to, to find a really interesting biography. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Yeah. That's great. And I, that's really interesting, though. But YouTube is like all the stuff on the news and I'll go, oh, well, I hardly ever watch the news. I mean, it's very rare. But if something comes across, I'll go, OK, I'll check that out on YouTube <laughs> and see because I want to go to the source. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's the actual person that's on YouTube. But isn't that amazing that we have that uh, possibility and opportunity? We didn't have that. Yeah. 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 Do you worry? I'll just check with a real person. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting when you mention the news, uh, unless I've been a captive audience, like in a, in a salon or, or something, I have not voluntarily watched the news for more than 15 years. Yes. 
Oh, I'm with you. I and I when I work with people who have anxiety, I say, turn off the television, turn off the news, do not watch it. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, you, you come to see me, and we are going to move you into a different reality because it's not going to help you. And I've actually worked with news directors, several of them actually, and they say that they're always looking for the most dramatic story because that's mm -hmm. how they hold their audience. So we know precisely that up front. So relate that then, the, the notion of always looking for the most dramatic story mm -hmm. to a writer's journey, an author's journey. Yes. I I love my author's journey is about sharing. I've always been a share. I want, but I want to share in a way that's meaningful and helpful and it's going to lift the person. So I I've, I've been writing, you know books when they weren't actually books where they were stapled together, you know, and, um, and I also wrote some with some major newspapers, uh, a couple of major newspapers in St. Louis, I wrote columns. So one was called the game of life. And uh, every week I had a story and then what you can do with that story. So my, my edge is always practicality. Like when you understand um, the a concept of, maybe attraction or magnetism, how do you use that in your life? And how do you use it to make your life better? Or if you understand positivity, why is that important? And how can you make use of it in your life? So those are the things that, that I like to, to present is the, a concept and then a, a practicality. I want people to be able to grow with these things and not just it's, Oh, that was interesting. Cause I'll say to people, Oh, they say, I read that book and I go, Oh, good. What did you learn? And then they'll look at me sometimes with like a deer in the headlights, you know, and I go, Oh, learn. <laughs> you know? But I, that's, that's always my edge is, is what can we learn from this? How can this be make you better? How can this improve your life? And that's what my books are all about too. So what is your process, though, as an author? It's like, okay, this is what I want to say in this book. And, mm -hmm. I mean, your first book was published in 1995, mm -hmm. and you published a number of books since then. Yes, but what yes. is your process to go through from here is the idea of this book that I would like to write Yes, through um, to now I have it in my hot little hand? Yes, yes. Um, the, well, the first book was uh, from uh, a choice between love and fear. It, it was uh, from love to fear. And it was all I, I in my mind, I wanted I saw I was raised with a very fearful mother. She was absolutely afraid of everything. And it was like, we are at war because I was always trying to convince her to, you know, good things are happening all the time. <laughs> and so I so she was a great motivator for me. So that the book Love or Fear came through. I always get an idea and then I follow up and start putting together concepts. So that, wow. yeah, it's kind of like a, I want to call it like a bubble. And then you, you have this idea of love or fear, and then you, you put together different ideas to go with it. And then you start compiling and then, then, then you add words to it all. But I, I, I have to say I channel a lot of my writing. Like the last book, I'd say half of it was just pure channeling. I would just mm -hmm. meditate and then it would start coming to me and I would just write, 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 write. And then then I would edit and clean it up, you know, and then that became a chapter in the book. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's a lot of what I've learned to do over the years is just trust my writing, trust my flow, I guess is the best way to say it. I trust my flow. And then the interesting thing about that is the articles that I write like that are the ones that are most have the most accolades mm -hmm. <laughs> and get the most attention. And so I, you know, you can't really go wrong when you, when you, if you have a, a high intention, if you're, if you're focused in a way to be helpful, then that's what comes through. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it would come through if if it was like, now I'm going to tell people all the reasons to be afraid today. I don't think it would come through. But I but my my thought is always about we're here, we're divine beings. How can we live that divinity and share it in a way that we increase 
the potentiality of of each person that we come near, that we touch. And I think that's one of the things I'm known for in my area, whether I work with people around the country and also sometimes in other lands, you know, other countries. And I think that's the thing I'm known for is like when you're in trouble, when things are confusing, call Jean. (laughs) <laughs> and uh and so that happens regularly i mean it, it happens very regularly like one gal uh her husband got hit by a car and died the first person she called was me she didn't call a relative she called me and i i appreciate that because i feel like first of all i have her interest in my mind i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go to what i feel i'm gonna help her with what she's going through and they can trust me for that and then I'm always going to help them work through it in a way that they can maybe see the light in it you know not to say that him being hit by a car was a great thing but um, we look at you know what was going on in his life that would lead to him sort of surrendering it because I don't know that any of that is accidental in a cosmic way. <laughs> so, um, so those are the things that happen a lot. And, uh, and I'm proud of that. So you mentioned, chan- you know, you, you tended to channel some of, some of your work for mm-hmm. people who don't know what that is, okay. or are at the point where they're, they're still trudging through. Yeah. What are some of the steps to be able to get to the point where you almost like get out of your own way from yeah. a practical standpoint? If you're talking to somebody who's who's writing a book, who has a bit of an idea what you're talking about, you know, they've, they've had their moments maybe on a sports field where they've just yeah. felt in the flow in that zone, but they don't know how to get there, certainly from a writing perspective. Yes. What are some suggestions that you have from a practical standpoint? Yes. Oh, well, two big ones. One is journal, everyday journal, whether it's, um, you know, I, I think it's a great idea when you first get up out of bed to just journal before you do anything, to just start writing three, or three to five pages and let it come, whatever your thoughts are. People say, I don't know, I don't know, I would just, just make circles until the first word starts coming into your mind and just write. It doesn't make sense. Doesn't Don't worry about it. Just write. And then do that consistently. In a matter of, I would say, at least a month, in a matter of a month, you'll begin to see that there's a pattern to the journaling. And then, then you'll begin to recognize that there's this a flow that happens when you just write whatever shows up in your mind. The reason what you want to do it early in the day is before you get into your mental chatter. <laughs> and so, um, you know, we want to, we want to get, I call it pure when we get in, when we're in a pure state where we're not into like, I have to do this. I got to go pick up the dry cleaning. I've got, blah, 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 and I got to add, you know, and when we get, we don't want to get, we want to get to our mind before it starts cluttering. And the second thing is super important (laughs) is to meditate, Mm -hmm. to meditate. It's even if you can only do it for five minutes, start meditating, do it for five minutes, then 10 minutes, and then 15 minutes, but, but build it up to what you're doing is creating a quiet mind. You know, most people do not have a quiet mind. They're rattling and chattering with themselves all day long. But if you can create a quiet mind, and it it's a matter of discipline. That's really all it is, a matter of discipline. When you do that, then you're available if there's a stressor, if there's something that's going on. If I'm great in an emergency because I have disciplined my mind to where I can focus on one thing and just go forward with it. But that that ability to meditate and and get into this stillness allows you to go deeper into the mind. And then you can ask a question like, let's see, how do I go forward with this idea of this book? And then you wait. And then and then and then if you've allowed yourself to develop that stillness, ideas will start coming through. And so then you've got it working. Then you've got it working. But I'd say, you know, another thing might be just to really be clear about your intention. Because um, when you know, I wanted to help people during this pandemic, 
thing. <laughs> I wanted to help people get beyond their fear and really understand that they could live in a in a place where they could see goodness, they could see light, they could see possibility. And I wanted them to have that. It was me actually moving beyond my fearful mother <laughs> and all the processes I went through to make sure that I was not living in her, the state that she was living in. <laughs> so I was, uh, so that, I mean, though that was very purposeful and it was very helpful and, uh, you know, the book did well. So that's kind of my process. Okay. Those are some things that if anybody should do it, I mean, really, this is not just for authors. This is for everyone. So that particular, let's let's focus on the particular book that you just showed us. Mm -hmm. So your process from the the time you thought, okay, I'm going to write this particular book mm -hmm. through to holding it in your hands was mm -hmm. approximately how long? Oh, I write fast. <laughs> um, yeah, once I get a clear picture of what I want to do, it, it was in a couple months. I mean, okay. the, the book probably was done within a month but then in the process itself takes longer i mean the, the talk us through it. that process so um, for, for, an, for an, yes so it's for somebody who's writing a book and intending to go through the process of having it where they can hold it in their hand mm, okay what is that process so the first part obviously is the writing but then what you need a team <laughs> I have, a t you know, I have a team. I've lost a, a crucial member of my team this last year, but uh, I need the first, the editor, you know, you want to run it by someone that can look at it with objective eyes and say, this sentence doesn't make sense and you need to rearrange your chapters or whatever. So the editor is super important. And then uh, after you get it through the editing process, that's like a a back and forth thing. And I, it's, I really love it because it's like a team, like a, I'm on a team and we we're, we're playing this game together. And then after that, um, you know, we're somewhere in there, you're, you find, have to find a book cover, someone who can design a great cover. And, um, and then I, I really like to have people that can load it up, load it up on like for instance, Amazon or Kindle um, because I, I over the years I found that having a publisher sometimes is a handicap. <laughs> and <How's that? laughs> well, because they've got other books, number one. So so if they're not, they might be into publishing, but they may not be into marketing. And so then I'm always going to be the one, the author is always the one that's going to market it. <laughs> so if you're going to do all the marketing anyway, you might as well have control of the book. And if if you give it to a publisher, and I've had three or four, four or five publishers over the years, um, you're at their mercy. I mean, they may never do one thing to market it. That doesn't mean you can't, but at the same time, then you know you're 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 in sort of slave labor to them in that. Maybe they're going to pay out royalties once a year. Maybe they're going to forget to pay royalties. <laughs> you know, so again, it it goes back to you, and so it's up to you if you're going to make royalties from a book. You've got to be in charge. So that's what I've learned about publishing. Now, if maybe if you were in Random House or some big publisher, it might be different. But um, I've never had that opportunity. <laughs> So you mentioned marketing. What are some of the marketing steps that you take as a self-published author? Well, I I have someone that does social media for me. And so she sends uh, my blogs out to every, you know, all the social media platforms. And, um, and, you, and I have uh, uh, links to my books. I also advertise them through my blog, but I also, through this media that we're using today, we're talking about the books. So um, kind of like, and then I, of course, when you lecture, you, you bring the books along and I've been on, um, oh, like boards where, um, you know, what, it's not the right word, but in, where, where, pub, where authors were sitting together and sharing with an audience. I know. Panels. <laughs> there it is. And uh, so I've used a lot of different methods to get the word out about the books. 
And I've got two YouTube channels too, by the way. I have two YouTube channels. So it's all about maybe taking uh, some thoughts from a book and then sharing them. And out of all of those, if you had to pick the top one for getting getting audience engagement, not necessarily sales, but audience engagement, what would it be? You know, I'm never quite sure what is what it is that's working, but um, I would say probably some online publishing uh, uh, sites, have, you know, where you could specifically target a certain book, and 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 a publisher would put it online and put it. I don't know what they do exactly, but but they get the word out. And then um, and then also, I would say just being in front of people. Being in front of people helps because they they know that you know what you're talking about, and um, maybe they like a, one of the a comment strikes them, and then they go, okay, I'm gonna I trust her now. I'm gonna go get yes. that book. <laughs> yeah. So still with your your author journey, what's your kryptonite when it comes to being an author? What's the thing that stops you in your track? Well, I'm sort of between right now. So I don't know that it's kryptonite because I've got other projects I'm, and things I'm working on. But um, I don't know. Well, I think probably the technical end of things because I, I'm i really – the writing part's easy for me. You know, it, it's I have lots of information. I mean, I actually could be writing a book a month if I actually just did that. But um, – but it's all the technical part. That's that's where that's my kryptonite. <laughs> that's why I need a team. <laughs> exactly. That's what I was about to say. But yeah. you take care of that with your team. Yes. Yes. I have people that I can turn to and go. I need you to handle this part for me, and they they're very very good at it. And yes. I, go, I salute you. <laughs> You're awesome. <laughs> so. What's been the most surprising thing for you thus far in your author journey? I guess maybe how much fun it is. I mean, I really like writing. I mean, it comes easy for me. I really like it. So I also, at per, pres, presently, I'm writing some uh, articles for online magazines too. Mm -hmm. And those come really easy for me. It's like, give me a topic that has to do with people or, or transformation or being healthier or whatever. And, and here we go. You know, I don't, I don't like reading stuff about how your boyfriend cheated on you or I don't like right, reading any of that kind of stuff. So all my writing is always geared toward, um, you know, how to get through stuff, how to help yourself be stronger, how to transform your ideas about life, how, you know, et cetera, and uh, how to work through stress. Those are the things that are of interest. I like a broad picture, too. That's another thing. I really like a broad picture, like the whole thing about how the universe works. I like that. That is so cool for me. I like to know how the universe works. <laughs> I want to yes. help other people know how the universe works. Because when I was really young, I thought this whole thing looks pretty strange and weird. The whole thing. I thought there's got to be something more to this because, you know, what I'm seeing in front of me does not make any sense at all. <laughs> and it was like, you know, people worrying, people stressing about, you know, going to work or uh, you know, paying the bills or how much the groceries cost. I went, no, I know. No, there's got to be more to it. So from a very early age, I was looking for answers. You know, how does this work? You know, and when I'd find something like the um, Psycho-Cybernetics, have you ever read that book, Psycho-Cybernetics? Yes, several Max times. Holmes. Yes, several times. That was one of the first books. And I went, oh, Oh my God, you know, I was so excited because it gave me an answer. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then Joseph Murphy is another one, the power mm -hmm. of the subconscious mind. And he's mm -hmm. written a bunch of bunch of things. Oh my God. It was yes. like I found gold, you know. Yes. And, and so that that was my journey. Is like what a and then because I could use these principles and I could watch them work in my life. And then it was like you know, I was on fire. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Let's 
let's wrap our discussion with some final questions. Sure. So nice short answers. Okay. What is the most important thing that you have learned thus far in your author journey? Yeah, writing books is a great way to reach a lot of people in places that you might never be get to. Uh, and just connecting with people. And I love connecting with people. But writing books is a great way to be able to touch lives. And I love that. Exactly. I mean, that's how this whole series came about in the first place was this this, this notion that I kept having that that books are they essentially are time machines. Yes. They allow authors to travel through time because right. you can pick up a book and it might I mean, I travel with books that were published in the 1800s. Oh yeah. And you know, one of my favorites is Sir Walter Scott. I can pick up his journal. Mm -hmm. And I can read this man's thoughts and yeah. his in his words. Mm -hmm. Isn't that awesome? Yes, that's that's like traveling through time. That's yeah. I think that's that's very special. Yeah. So I, I know agree him. With you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful. Oh, don't get don't get me started on Sir Walter Scott. <laughs> You're never shut me up. He's your favorite. Okay. <laughs> if you had to describe yourself in three words, what would they be? Um, uh, resilient, <laughs> um, intuitive, uh, intentional. Those are three. I have lots more, but <laughs> those three, would be three will be fine. <laughs> okay. So you're planning a dinner party. Uh -huh. You can invite five authors, living or dead. Who would they be? Well, I would invite a lot of authors, but um. Uh, Joseph Murphy would be one. Joel Goldsmith would be one. Anne Rand would be one. Um, I think I'd invite Oprah too, by the way. And you know that um, Mahatma Gandhi is was an author, so I'd definitely invite him. <laughs> already got your five. There's only six seats and you take up the other one. <laughs> what if I stand and then let somebody else? <laughs> no, no, that was a great question. No, I liked it. That would be a really interesting dinner party. What do you think would be the the most illuminating topic that would be discussed? I think that when all of these writers would be listeners, and so they would probably pass it around a little bit, but they would be talking, I think they would talk a little bit about philosophy and um, and just how to view, how to take control of their world in a way that is powerful and insightful and um and forward thinking. So I think that all of these people have that commonality, you know, and really looking at life from a point of view of service. So I, I just think they, they would be aligned in a lot of these things, but they'd say it in different ways, which would make it very, very interesting. Yes, which again also speaks to the notion of a, an author, particularly in the self-development arena saying, but haven't they all been written? You know, you can always say something with a new voice. Yes. All right. What is the best piece of advice that you can give to somebody who is just starting out on their author journey? Okay. Be willing to learn and don't worry about your mistakes. I mean, just you, we're going to make lots of mistakes when anytime you take on a new venture, you're going to just plop along a little bit, you know, maybe fall on your face a couple of times and just be willing to do that and don't take it so seriously. You know, it, it's all going to work out. Just keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. And if you feel like you really do have a, a message, then stay with that message. I mean, in other words, write in your own arena, stay in your lane. Um, so that because that's the only way you can actually be powerful. Wonderful. Last question. As an author, what do you hope is the legacy that you will leave the world? I don't actually think much about legacy, but I would say I, I really want to feel that I've made a difference in in whatever way. I want to feel that um, I've helped some people. And I do feel that. <laughs> I do feel yes. that. And your books do. They do. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. In every, in, Miss, through all the media. Miss Jean Walters, thank you so much for, for, for our lovely discussion today and for being part of this author's journey conversation. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's been fun.
All right. Take care of you. Talk soon. All right. Bye. Bye. Have a good one.